time. Mark, 15 seconds until airtime. Insider. We need to get community. We need this thing to be bigger than just our little circle of players and coaches. Are you kidding me? Touchdown, Oregon! With two seconds on the clock, he hits it! That's the bigger picture in this thing. Allowing the community to celebrate the hard work, blue collar mentality this group brings to the table. And the Ducks have won it! The Ducks have won! We get to struggle together and we get to have joy together. Dante will dribble it out! The Ducks are Pac-12 Tournament Champions! I am so proud right now to be the head coach at Oregon. Oregon's a Fiesta Bowl champion in a 12-win season. This is Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Presented by On Point Community Credit Union. People are the point. Now let's go live to the Country Financial Studio to talk Oregon Duck Athletics. It is Duck Insider on a Tuesday. Ryan Milano here in the Country Financial Studio. We're breaking down Oregon football spring practice just wrapped up. Just had interviews with Coach Land and a few student athletes. We'll get to those later in the show today or with Joey on Duck Insider tomorrow. It's also baseball game day as Oregon goes up to Portland to play. Joey literally just left the studio. He is now en route uh, to Portland to go call that game between the Ducks and Pilots with some unfinished business. We're talking with Melissa Lombardi today, previewing Ducks versus Dogs this weekend on the softball diamond. And... It's Athletic Director Tuesday. H.J. Cohn is here. H.J., how are you Thanks doing? Thanks for having me. Really well. First time that you and I get to interact yeah. in an on-air capacity. Just uh, catch me up with things. Senior Associate Athletic Director in charge of development. What is, what is new in your world since we've last had you on Duck Insider? Yeah, well, one, always uh, love coming on, so thanks for having me. Uh, two, what goes without saying good luck to you today. Um, kind of a wild card, as Joey reminded us both of on the way out. But um, we have been uh, very busy, and, and it seems that's kind of a common theme throughout the year. You know, historically speaking, in, in college athletics, your downtime is that summer when you're not having matches and games and whatnot. And so we're right in the thick of it, obviously. Uh, uh, football is year-round, it feels like, especially as it pertains to recruiting. Uh, spring ball just starting. Uh, right in the middle of things with our spring sports, uh, getting ready for postseason competition coming up in April and May. Um, and then on the ticketing front, developing fr development front, that's constantly going throughout the year as well. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that, I'm sure. But with basketball renewals coming up and, and obviously a great run uh, men's basketball made uh, at the end of the year, into the postseason in the NCAA tournament. Uh, and then track and field season coming up with some wonderful events that Lane County and, and University of Oregon uh, are able to host uh, and a pretty cool uh, moment for us as we continue to think and, and kind of self-reflect of, okay, every year for the at least the foreseeable future, we have NCAA track and field championships here. We have Olympic trials, a history of hosting them. So some enormous competitions and meets coming up as it pertains to Hayward. And then, like I said, on the football ticketing front, it's it's year round and we have uh, some exciting stuff coming up as we enter the spring game. Yeah, We know more than anybody that uh, football is year round. Interviews from Coach Landon coming up later in the show. And that's where I want to start. It, we had Jason Harris on the show last Ooh. week talking about the tickets and the allotment that's left in terms of how many season tickets are still available. The last number <laughs> we heard last week was about 600 in terms of the ticket packages that are available for season tickets just catch us up football season tickets where are we at yeah great question we're in a very unique spot uh that we're very excited about a good uh, problem to be in if you will so as of today we have around uh, a little under 400 season tickets that we can sell for the this upcoming season uh, our, our record year jason probably alluded to it we had a, a record peak high of about 41,000 season tickets we are anticipating selling the remainder of those season tickets a little under 400, as I mentioned, between now and probably the spring game, if not sooner, um, which will put us right around that 39,000 mark. And the reason that is that's our cap now compared to 10, 10 plus years ago at the 41K mark is the Big Ten allotment requires more. Um, over that time, we've expanded our student sections because we've seen a, a high need and a high demand. Uh, and a willingness to participate. So we've kind of pulled back a little on the season ticket front. So we expect to hit that uh, here before the spring game. Obviously a ton of excitement 
uh, spurring from the season we had and the excitement going into the not only the Big Ten but with the leadership that Coach Landing brings and the student athletes that we have coming back um, and the excitement as, as we look forward to our, our schedule coming up. Not only this year, and I think that's one thing I'll give credit to the Big Ten for, is what they did a good job of is we call it a matrix. They announced a five-year matrix. And what that means is, you know, in conference, and historically speaking, including us, it's even available online, you can look up who your non-conference opponents are slated for. I think we're out till 2031. Rob and Eric do a great job of working with our head football coach and determining how do we want to strategically schedule ourselves, whether it's a tier one, tier two, tier three opponent, knowing what you have coming in conference. And so the Big Ten and I don't think the Pac-12 had previously done this, what it allowed our fans to do is say, okay, now we know the non-conference for 24, 25, 26, and so on. And now we also know what conference opponents will be home at Autzen Stadium and on the road for the next five years. And that's that matrix I talked about. It's not the exact dates. Those will be on a year-to-year basis when they actually schedule those dates of who is coming here on October 13th and where are we going on in November. But it gives you a sense of what opponents are coming to Eugene, Uh, in Autzen Stadium and then where we're traveling on the road. So I think that definitely had a a piece to play in the excitement around Oregon football and the season ticket front and the demand. One one piece, like I alluded to, there's a lot of excitement around the program as a whole. Uh, But I I certainly feel just putting – my public facing hat on if I didn't work here, you know, when I, if I would get season tickets, that would certainly motivate me. If I can look at the future and say, okay, in 2025, we're hosting non-conference Oklahoma state and Oregon state. Uh, in addition to X big 10 schools coming to Autzen, you really can start to see the value of a season ticket versus waiting last minute, which we've had people that say, Hey, I can only make one game. Totally understand that. I'm maybe opting in for a mini plan, a historic mini plan that we've had, or a single game that we've had when tickets are available. That script has flipped in some sense, and that's what we're really going to be tasked to do over the foreseeable future of educating fans, the value of season tickets, the timing of when they go on sale. If you don't have season tickets and you want them, strongly encourage you to get them right now because, like I said, there's 400 left for this upcoming season. Um, And then what that looks like if you aren't able to get season tickets for whatever reason, um, what options you have. And in terms of season tickets, it, there's the Big Ten, the transition that changes a lot of things for, for a lot of people, but it changes things for the fans as well because now Watson Stadium, it always was a destination, but now it's the first <clears> time that some opponents are going to be able to come and experience Eugene, experience Watson Stadium, and that, that changes the way that Oregon fans sort of have to look at acquiring their tickets and getting at Watson Stadium for, for some big-time games coming up in the fall. Yeah, I've said this historically. We, we have some of the best fans. When you go around the nation, our fans travel extremely well to support their ducks and and many sports Uh, but but as it pertains to football I can count uh, a number of times where we're playing in Atlanta against the defending champions and we're having thousands on thousands of people there if we're playing at Virginia uh, we have tons of people there if we're playing in the state of Texas we have tons of duck fans supporting our team there Ohio State was a great example we might not have the largest alumni base we might not have the largest stadium we certainly don't and and that definitely impacts resources the, the unique and new aspect I think our fans will uh, recognize is that we will likely see an uptick of opposing fans coming to Eugene. Autzen Stadium has gained notoriety over a number of decades um, with some uh, wonderful experience, a great town and state to visit. But also when you, when you circle in college football places you want to go see a game, Autzen Stadium is right there at the top. And so this is an entire new fan base that will now have the opportunity to come back here when their team is playing in Autzen Stadium. So we do expect of that increased allotment that the Big Ten requires for opposing fans, we expect most of those Big Ten schools to utilize their full allotment. Previously in the Pac-12, if we had a team that was visiting here and they weren't going to utilize and they, their fans didn't travel, say, as well, we would get those tickets back and have the ability to sell them the week of the game. We don't anticipate that nearly as much as we once did again for the Pac-12. So, again, going back to that supply and demand basic econ of we are going to have less tickets to offer even on a single-game basis because the rise of season ticket holders and the excitement around that. But additionally, the expansion of our student section, which we did a couple of years ago, and then uh, the Big Ten requirements and them actually utilizing them in full versus giving us some back. So, uh, one, I think it's, it's going to be a wonderful – Austin Stadium is going to be 
a great environment. Uh, our students last year especially, uh, not only in football, but this basketball season as well, and volleyball and countless other sports have really shown, dating back to baseball last year when we hosted Super Regionals. I mean, what a cool setting PK Park ended up being and the fans that came out. But I really want to har harp on the students as well. And they really, in my opinion, set the tone for a home venue and a home field, home court advantage. And so the students uh, certainly are the, the forefront of the foundation of that, in addition to when we're talking Autzen Stadium, the amount of fans, uh, Duck fans that will travel even from as far as outside the state to our home games on a consistent basis and giving us that continued home field advantage that we all have come to love. You, you talk about setting the tone. Earlier today, just got the color schedule for what fans should wear at Autzen Stadium. and The fan experience is really going to make a difference because you mentioned that the Big Ten might even travel a little bit more, use up that allotment. The the Autzen fans that do come out and do support, that, that's that got to be a big difference for Oregon where Autzen Stadium has historically been a really strong home field advantage for the Ducks, and that's something that we really want to keep continuing now into this Big Ten era. Yeah, I, I can I, I have a smirk on my face because I do recognize there will be a desire uh, to sell potentially tickets to a highly demanded game. I mean, it's no secret. Ohio State, they will come in waves out here if they have the ticket availability. Um, not only from buying them on the secondary, from people that are Duck fans that have them say, gosh, it's it would, wouldn't be the worst thing ever to recoup my full season ticket costs in one game. I recognize that. Um, but being in Austin Stadium for a game and a marquee matchup like that, for those that went to watch us play at Ohio State, that that moment after the game and the team coming to the, the corner of the end zone where the majority of the Duck fans were um, and just celebrating together, you don't get that at home. And so uh, I hope that our fans are, one, welcoming to the opposing fans. It's a new conference, um, an opportunity. But I also think that, it'll create a lot of buzz in our community. Uh, the economic impact will drastically increase, in my opinion, as well, not only from local food and restaurant, uh, but the hospitality industry as a whole. And I think you'll start to see, more so than uh, historically speaking, visiting fans coming in on Thursday, whether it's walking around the Casanova Complex and, and our athletic footprint over here, campus, uh, in, the, in at the 5th, Oakway Center, destination areas in our community, and you'll start to see those colors being um, you know, shined by these other schools coming into town. And I, I hope our fans are welcoming uh, because that's what we hope when we go there. And like I said, we have some of the best traveling fans when we go on the road, and we've had wonderful experiences. I hope we can have that same opportunity given to them. H.J. Cohn joining us, Senior Associate Athletic Director of Development. Spring game coming up, but later this month. Had a really strong showing at the spring game last year. Uh, continuing to try to build off of that this year. What's on your plate uh, heading forward towards the spring, spring game coming up in just a few weeks? Yeah, watching the weather is always one thing, you know, something that we can't control. But, no, we've, we've been fortunate to have a wonderful showing, especially in recent years at the spring game, an opportunity to uh, get football for the first time in four to five months for a lot of people coming back into Autzen. Uh, we are doing some things behind the scenes and hope to announce um, some more activation, I guess, if you will, is the best way to describe it, around the spring game that you can only experience, like I said, if you're in Autzen. Uh, I want to say we have a, a soccer scrimmage that Saturday before, and then softball plays at home on Sunday afterwards, um, in addition to, I believe, the Eugene Marathon being in town. So a lot of things to do in Eugene that weekend if you're trying to make uh, more of a weekend or an overnight out of it. Um, but we expect, uh, again, jokes aside, weather dependent, we expect a very big turnout. One, if it's going to be a direct correlation to how our season ticket sales uh, are going around the program, we expect a large turnout to see, in this case, uh, you know, a new team in some sense and see some – guys that they were probably familiarized with last year and continuing to grow in their role and what kind of role do they play coming into this following this upcoming football season. So uh, hopefully one or two more things that we get to announce here in the next week or two around the spring game that will just be one more reason that I got to be in Eugene on April 27th. Yeah, so stay tuned for those announcements whenever they, they come through the pipeline. Are you good to stick around for another segment? Yeah, absolutely. H.J. Cohn joining us, and we've got so much more to talk about, talking development, talking tickets, so much more on the other side. It's Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Dear spring showers, these tough Toyotas can handle whatever you got. The rugged Tacoma, Trail Ready 4Runner, and the versatile RAV4 Hybrid turn your puddles into playtime. For more, visit Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. As a local community credit union founded by teachers, OnPoint is committed to supporting the students and faculty at the University of Oregon. 
And on game day, we're right there with you on the field, in the bleachers, and in the classrooms. Drop by our local branch today and discover the many ways On Point can help support your financial well being. On Point Community Credit Union. People are the point. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. Dear Spring Showers, these tough Toyotas can handle whatever you've got. The rugged Tacoma, Trail Ready 4Runner, and the versatile RAV4 Hybrid turn your puddles into playtime. For more, visit Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Your daily dose of Oregon athletics. This is Duck Insider from Learfield. The possibility of lung cancer can be pretty scary, especially if you're one of approximately 8 million current or former smokers at high risk. That's why SaveByTheScan.org wants you to know that now there's a breakthrough low-dose CT scan that can detect lung cancer early, and it only takes 60 seconds. You stop smoking, now start screening. For an easy quiz to see if you're eligible, visit SaveByTheScan.org. It could save your life. SaveByTheScan.org is brought to you by the American Lung Association's Lung Force Initiative and the Ad Council into the building for the first time after the shooting. It was crippling, but it had to be preserved. In response to the Pulse nightclub shooting that affected the LGBTQ community, Barbara Poma, owner of Pulse, founded the One Pulse Foundation to honor Pulse victims and survivors. If you're an ally of this community, speak out. There are more of us together than apart. It is the power of love in its rawest form. Join the fight for LGBTQ acceptance. Learn how at lovehasnolabels.com. Brought to you by Love Has No Labels and the Ad Council. Back on Duck Insider here in the Country Financial Studio, Ryan Milano joined by H.J. Cohn, the Senior Associate Athletic Director in charge of development. And we talked a lot about football, and now there, there's so many – so much other momentum for for Oregon kind of going over at this point in the year basketball season just wrapped up and a tremendous run by by coach Altman and his squad and that's got to drive more engagement as as well for a team to go on a run win the Pac-12 championship be competitive in March throughout the tournament that's really important around here yeah i think as it pertains to men's basketball that run that they made you know, going kind of an ad adversity type season and struggling with injuries, which unfortunately has been a narrative the last couple of years that Coach Altman has had to deal with. But he is just unbelievable coach. I mean, he's a Hall of Fame coach. That's no secret. But to see what he did and and get 18 to 22 year olds to buy in and stay the course, stay the course, stay the course all the way till basically the end when you had to make a break and they go on that run. Uh, kudos to him, his staff, the student athletes, uh, everyone in that program to be able to make that run through the Pac-12 tournament. And I think the biggest thing is uh, the takeaway I had that I have that, and I'm continuing to hear from some of our longtime supporters and uh, people that are around the program is how proud they were of that team and how much they overcame this year and what that can do leading into next season. It certainly helps us on the renewal front. There's a, there's a buzz around it and saying, I gosh, I, I, I want more. I want more of the candy after the way things played out near the end of the year. And that was so exciting to see what coach Altman and company were able to do. So uh, renewals for both men's and women's basketball coming up in the next couple weeks, I believe. Uh, and then we'll go through our seat selection process sometime in late May or early June um, uh, for both men's and women's start in June and, and could probably end up maybe even a little bit in July because we have some large scale events on the track side with NCAA championships, Olympic trials. So finding ways to let people get their time to renew their tickets um, which we expect a, a high renewal rate on both those programs and then also be able to add new season ticket holders or move around seats within the arena um, before we know it. So talk me through that that sort of transition where it's after season, fans want to get involved, they want to secure their season tickets, but it's not renewal time yet. But what is the type of engagement that you have gotten about it? And then what do you tell fans who want to get their season tickets now? But it, it's not time yet. Yeah, so we actually, during uh, the Pac-12 tournament, at least on the men's side run, we put out an email to non-season ticket holders, and we put out some publicity to non-season ticket holders targeting them saying, you know, now is a chance to sign up for an appointment time or even put a deposit down to garner tickets for the next season. So we have had some interest uh, on that front, which has been well-received and allows them to know, hey, I'm going to have an opportunity in the time 
to purchase season tickets when that becomes available, which, I, like I said, will be in June and July. Uh, prior to that, we go through the season ticket renewal. So if you had season tickets last year, you have the rights to renew those exact seats. If you want to keep them, don't make any changes, great. You renew them during that time frame, April and May, and you have those seats for the upcoming season next year, like I said. So we're kind of right in that uh, final planning phase before we roll out the renewal opportunity. Like I said, it starts in about two weeks. Um, and then once we wrap that up at the end of the May, we'll continually go after new season ticket holders throughout the entire off season. We'll, we'll likely see an uptick um, late summer, early fall, when we have our schedule announced uh, on both men's and women's programs. That's historically when it comes out. And we'll see more of an uptick then about excitement as it's back. Um, so right now, I think a lot of people are tuned in to both men's and women's basketball with the NCAA tournament going on. Uh, it's that time of year, March Madness, now into April Madness, if you will. Women's basketball tournament providing a lot of excitement just as, as much as men's. Um, so there's excitement and people are naturally thinking about the collegiate sport of men's and women's basketball, which should help us as we get ready for renewals. What about the renewal process from the fans who might have had seats up in the 200 level and they say, oh, I, I like those seats, I want season tickets again, but now I want to be closer to the floor. What's the process like for that? Yeah, so what they would do is they would renew their tickets during that uh, window between April and May, and then based on our priority point system, they would receive a time slot where you would go in, think of when you're purchasing an airline ticket. You go in, what's in red is unavailable, what's in yellow is your current seats up in the 200, and what's in green is available. And you say, I want those two, and here's the new price, and check out, and those seats are yours. Going into this spring season towards summer, Hayward Field, it just opened up, and, and there's so many more events coming down the pipeline. How can fans experience Hayward Field? How can they get into this premier track venue that we have on campus? Yeah, I think, you know, when we first opened Hayward, it was a unique time in the entire world, uh, as we as we recall with COVID. And we also had a lot of events coming to Hayward Field. It was a very utilized facility. Potentially, you could argue, overutilized and oversaturated that track town USA market to some extent. Uh, but now I think we're back on a really good path. We have NCAAs, like I said, locked up for a handful of years coming here in early June. And then you have Olympic trials starting basically a week or two after that uh, right in our backyard of, of Eugene, Oregon. And, and that the, both of those events have historically been so well received from uh, not only a community standpoint, if you're in the venue and in Hayward experiencing the energy that the, the sport of track and field brings, but just around our community. I, I kind of mentioned it when you're, we get to football season, you've got Big Ten fans probably coming earlier than day of or night before. I think you experience that with the track and field um, sport as a whole. It's, it is an international sport, as we know. Um, but domestically speaking, you have a lot of track and field fans that, one, understand Eugene, Oregon, and the state of Oregon in the summertime is a really pleasant place to be. Uh, we don't really struggle with humidity or the bugs all the time like some other places do. So, one, it's a destination city. And then you get some of the top-tier athletes in the world in the sport of track and field to watch before your own eyes in a beautiful facility. So tickets are on sale for, for both of those right now for NCAA championships uh, and Olympic trials, and we expect that to be a, a great um, – set of events in the month of June in Eugene. I'm glad you bring up the comparison because with these national events like the Olympic trials, like the NCAAs, there, there's going to be a whole lot of traction coming around, and there's a lot of ducks that, that we have to support out at Hayward Field as well. Also, men's golf. They're in action. You're the sport administrator for that sport. Uh, just catch us up. They played six uh, rounds in six days, just to closed up a few days ago. The, what's going on with men's golf? Yeah, so they uh, – did what they normally do during spring break. They uh, take an opportunity to host the Duck Invitational, which is hosted at Eugene Country Club. Uh, that that staff there did a wonderful job. I was out there Saturday. It was on a Monday and Tuesday, and I was out there on a Saturday. And you didn't know how they were going to get this thing turned around and, and be presentable, let alone playable. And what they do uh, throughout the, the evening and the night to make that uh, a place that we get a call, one of our homes, and present it to teams from all over the country this year. The Duck had... Uh, some new teams this year, the likes of Oklahoma State, Northwestern, Illinois, that traveled from afar to play in that tournament. Uh, so we finished second. It was it was a good tournament for us. And then we carried over and went down to the good win that Stanford hosts um, and played three straight days down there in a, in a very tough field, a large field and a tough field. Uh, and, you know, this is the time of year you want to kind of start to be peaking. You know, you got a couple more tournaments coming up here, and then you really get ready for the Pac-12 championships. And then uh, if all goes well, which we anticipate it to, uh, you get selected for a regional site. And it, it works a little bit like 
uh, March Madness in some sense. You get selected to one of the six regional sites, and then you got to work your way out of that regional site, whether it's 13 or 14 teams. you got to finish in the upper echelon to then go to nationals, um, which are taking place, I believe, in Southern California this year um, later on. So that that's the ultimate goal. 30 teams make nationals um, and NCAAs, and you want to be one of those 30 and then just go swinging. Uh, no pun intended. You really want to go down there and say, hey, this is a new tournament. This, the rest of the season behind us doesn't matter. We're not trying to qualify anymore. This is it. Let's just go get it. H.J. Cohen, Senior Associate Athletic Director of Development, joining us. Anything else the fans should know before we let you out of here? No, we're, we're just excited uh, as a whole. You know, springtime around uh, Eugene is really fun. We have a number of sports participating. It sounds like you're going to hear from Coach Lombardi later. Um, and what she continues to do with softball program in a very, very competitive league. Uh, you got Coach Waz that uh, the baseball program is doing really well. Uh, to go get a win in Portland today and then come back here and, and really continue the momentum for both of those programs. Um, and just a lot going on. So we encourage people to come visit us, come to support your student athletes and the Ducks. Um, like I said, there's it's a busy time right now. But if there's any indication, people are excited uh, to be around our programs and with the, the good weather that we've had and will continue to have in the spring, there's a lot of opportunities to come visit us and, and cheer on our ducks. H, th thanks for hanging out. Yeah. You went too easy on me today. I know, I mean, It was I a know. good introduction. Yeah, first date. Get <laughs> ready for the second. Uh, next time it's going to be uh, a lot more hectic. Uh, th there will be some jabbing back and forth. But, yeah. yeah, H.J., thanks for joining us. Thank you guys for having me. We're stepping aside on Duck Insider. We're going to hear that conversation with Coach Lombardi. That's what's next on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Hey, Duck fans, we're all about protecting our home turf here in Eugene. You should do the same for your home with Country Financial Insurance. Most home insurance doesn't account for inflation, but with Country Financial, yours can. If something happens to your home, make sure you can rebuild the same house in the same place. Call a local representative or 866-COUNTRY and get a solid defense for your home. Home insurance policies issued by Country Mutual Insurance Company, Country Casualty Insurance Company, or Country Preferred Insurance Company, Bloomington, Illinois. Property must meet aging condition requirements, which vary by state. At Shadow Hills Country Club, we're more than just an award-winning golf course and practice facility. Our events team offers all-inclusive event pricing that allows us to take care of all the details while you enjoy your event. Our indoor and outdoor venues offer you a wide variety of fully staffed options that put the focus on you. From weddings to business and social events, at Shadow Hills Country Club Event Center, you get the benefits of a resort atmosphere and amenities in a peaceful country setting. Just minutes from downtown Eugene. Call for a tour today or visit Shadow Hills Events com. You're listening to Duck Insider. Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. The impact of a meal goes well beyond feeding our bodies because feeling full can sound like this. How did the interview go? I did it. I got the job. I can't believe it. And like this. Mom, I got first place at the science fair with my volcano project. That's amazing, sweetie. Congratulations. Because when people are fed, futures are nourished and everyone deserves to live a full life. Join the movement to end hunger at feedingamerica.org slash act now. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Hi, I'm Smokey Bear, and I made an assistant to help you out, because only you can prevent wildfires. Hey, Assistant Smokey Bear, call me Papa Bear, because I'm grilling up dinner. <laughs> do you get it? Yes, good job. So, what should I do with all these coals? Don't just toss them out. Put them in a metal container, because those embers can start a wildfire. I understand. The stakes are high. Ha, 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 ha. Learn more at SmokeyBear.com. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Welcome back inside the Country Financial Studio. It's Duck Insider brought to you by On Point Community Credit Union. Ryan Milano sitting down with the coach of the softball team, Missy Lombardi. Coach, back from the road. A bit of a weird scheduled week this week with a Tuesday, Thursday, Friday schedule against Cal State Fullerton and UCLA. Just break down the road trip for me. How is the team? Um, well, you know, rested because we got canceled on our last day, unfortunately. So it gave us a couple days to kind of recover and rejuvenate from last week but I think about us playing Fullerton on Tuesday and then with with Easter weekend that's what pushed us to play Thursday Friday Saturday instead of our typical Friday Saturday Sunday 
And going up against Cal State Fullerton, got the win in that game, and, and a strong Cal State Fullerton team in their conference. And you needed some runs late and were able to really put that knockout punch on Cal State Fullerton late. What was that feeling like for the offense when you're in a tight ball game and then you're able to come out in the late innings and just really put the game away with the bats? I think it was great. You know, we I, I think it's important that we understand how to come back. You know, there's going to be plenty of times we're ahead, but then there's going to be times where we're behind. And with being behind in the game, can we put some things together late and, and find a way to win it? And I thought in the seventh with the amount of runs that we scored, I thought Emma had an unbelievable day. Hannah, um, Ariel, all those guys just continuing to do what they do at the plate was great to see. Going up against UCLA, you still had some of that mm -hmm. late inning offense. Didn't get the wins against UCLA. First time that you haven't come out on top against a Pac-12 opponent. But late in some of those games, you had some real opportunities where you brought the go-ahead run to the play when you entered into the seventh inning down by five runs. The offense late really kept your team in and still gave you a chance even against UCLA. Yeah, I thought they did. I mean, we were one swig away from um, being on top of that game, especially the, the first game and the second game. We were in it both games. It just we just um, I think we just left too many base runners on and, and, and needed to um, be able to to stop the bleeding with their offense. We gave them opportunity uh, to do things with a walk or a hit by pitch, a base hit, and then a big, you know, big swing, and it, it put us down in the game. So I think just cleaning up our games or cleaning up our innings uh, defensively and being able to put hitters away and then um, clutching up at the plate because we're there. We're right there in both games. It really did feel yeah. like it was one big swing for yeah. UCLA in both games one and two that were really the differential. So for you, when you're kind of evaluating those games against UCLA, is it, is it the big swing that, that you say, okay, that's what we need to clean up? Or, or is it the prior to the big swing and the base runners in front of it where those are your opportunities to be more successful as a, as a staff, a pitching staff, and a defense? Yeah, no, it's the prior. I think everybody would say it's the prior. You're going to give up home runs. I mean, we're, we're facing great athletes. It, the solo home run, we can give up it's the hit by pitch the walk the error that leads up to the big big home run that I think hurt us this past weekend so going up against UCLA you didn't have a chance on Sunday so it's the first Pac-12 series you dropped this year and yeah. you you say about the super regional mindset mm -hmm. of all these Pac-12 series so what's the response you want your team to have now looking forward into next week where you did drop this one series and now well you're right back at a super regional yeah. to get right back at it to to learn from it you know uh, sometimes when you don't get what you want um, you might miss out on on there's some good things that actually happen to to understand the things that we did well, um, to understand why we didn't get what we wanted, and to take it into this weekend against Washington. Some individual performers from over the weekend that really shined. Katie Flannery, she had a yeah. really strong weekend, her first career home run. She she went three for five over the weekend or against UCLA. What did you see from her and how her bat is continuing to develop? Just uh, she gets up there and she takes her hacks. She's a competitor. Um, I. I, she's not fearful or afraid of the moment. Like she's right there. She's ready to compete and get after it. And it was awesome to see that ball go out of the yard. D did that take some time for her, kind of in her development throughout the the camp and into season? And or was it something that you always knew when she got onto this team that she was ready to play collegiate softball and ready for some big moments? No, I think for all of them it takes a little bit. You know, they all they all have their own journeys. Everybody's journey is different from the other. And so just seeing what she She's been doing as of late and then you know she takes her hacks so when she connects we know it's gonna go um, so it was great to see her connect you talk about journeys the journey for Ariel Carlson mm -hmm. she has continued to be that middle of the order powerful bat that it really strikes fear into opponents and, and, and comes up big in huge situations she continues to be sort of that steadying factor for your offense She's been great. Um, she's been really good. Since we put her in the two hole, I think that's been a great spot for her because Kai gets on all the time, and on top of that, you have the bottom of our lineup. Um, Hannah Delgado has been unbelievable at turning the lineup over, so Ariel comes up with runners on base. And um, just to see her do what she's been doing and just how steady she's been at the plate and how she's really clutched up for us, it's, it's been awesome to watch her this year. And especially for your veterans kind of continuing to peak as Pac-12 play moves along where Ariel's numbers have somehow gotten even better in conference play and Elgato's numbers have skyrocketed throughout Pac-12 plays. The veterans on your team are starting to put together some really quality conference seasons. 
For sure. And, you know, sometimes really seasons in the past, you look back and your your overall numbers are really good, but then you see we're in the pack and we're facing tough, tough pitching, and you see your numbers maybe dip a little bit and that's just been the total opposite this year their their numbers have been have gotten better as we've gotten along and have gotten into tougher and tougher competitions so I love what this group is doing I hate that we weren't able to to get the series against UCLA um, I think for us it's something where we got to look at it and see what we got to do to get better and then go in and get our series against Washington Coach Lombardi with us. Didn't get the chance to talk to you last week here in studio because of the travel schedule and you being down in Los Angeles and Southern California. But Morgan Scott last week won Pac-12 Pitcher of the Week. So she continues to be a really strong pitcher in that starting staff that has a whole lot of bullets for you. What has she provided in terms of your pitching arms? She uh, just provides experience. She's been there. She's done that. Um, you know, she's she's faced this schedule last year and, and was injured last year. So just to see her healthy and a year, um, you know, into it, like just – just an elder, a more experienced, understands how to handle the pack. Um, it's It's been awesome to watch her as well this year. Touched on it a little bit with Ariel and Hannah and now with Morgan, but getting to see Pac-12 competition for another season, how important is that to sort of acclimate your mm -hmm. game into into this conference specifically? I think it's really important. I think it's there's there's a way to go about the pack. Um, and when you get that experience and then you go into that next year, you understand what is required of you, what is required of your team to go into each Pac-12 series and, and understand, you know, how to go get those series. And I think that's what you're seeing this year. I think there was some series last year that we should have got that we didn't. And that experience is allowing them to do what they're doing this year. We talk about uh, response and mm -hmm. your response looking forward to this weekend. Washington coming to town. That is a big-time series coming to the game. Yes, yes. I can't wait. These guys are excited. We're excited to be home. We're excited to play in front of our fans. Um, we are looking forward to it. Uh, Washington, they're a good team in the conference. Mm -hmm. Scouting report against the Huskies. Uh, they pitch well. They hit well. They run well. I mean, they're, they're you know, they have great coaching. Um, it's they're, they're excellent at what they do. It's going to be a tough matchup, but um, we, we can't wait. It always means just a little bit more when you go up against Washington. Do you feel that a little bit as a coach? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Some uh, past Ducks, Allie Bunker getting honored. She's going to throw out the first pitch on Friday, getting honored for her academic All-American. I mean, she can do it in the classroom, on the field. And you talk about those three Bs as part of your program. It, bringing back Allie Bunker is a big part of that. It is. I think about what Allie Bunker has done for this program, and I. She came with me this first, the first year we were here together, um, and to watch her grow as a person, as an athlete, as a woman, um, as a teammate, as a leader, uh, I'm, I'm thankful for everything that Allie Bunker has done for us to be able to compete at the highest level in the classroom, and then on top of that, to be able to compete at the highest level as an athlete. It's just the epitome of what a student athlete is um, and that she has the ability to be great on both sides it's it's tough to be a student athlete and and to see how she's handled it for the time that she was here um, I think it allows our young athletes coming up saying that you can do both you can be high level on both ends those three B's before, beside, behind. You got to see Samaria Diaz down yeah. in California over mm -hmm. the weekend. That, that's a big part of your culture as a team, playing for the teammates in front of you, next to you, and that are going to come into this program behind you. That's a really big part of your culture. It is. It's a really, really big part. We love our alumni. They, um, We appreciate what they've done. Their journeys, the paths that they've taken, have allowed the opportunity for us and, and the things that these athletes have right now. And so we're so grateful for our alum. I love when our alum are around. As soon as we see them, I put them in front of our, our athletes for words of wisdom because they've been there. They've done that. They know what it takes. And um, our, our team really, really loves to hear from them and see them. Continuing to build, coming into this weekend, going up against Washington. Friday is Youth Day. Ali mm -hmm. Bunker will throw out the first pitch. And then Sunday is the pink game being rescheduled. Uh, Coach, anything else that fans should know before uh, we let you get out of here and uh, continue to scout the Huskies? I just think with what we have left, is it's a huge, huge um, portion of, of the pack. And to come out and support us, we need your help. Um, just to be able to play in front of our fans and to play able to play at the Jane is huge for us. So we're we're looking forward to a packed house and and to get um, the opportunity to take down the Huskies.
Ducks and Dogs coach. Thanks for taking the time. Mm -hmm, thanks. We're stepping aside. We're back on Duck and Sider after this on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Dear Spring Showers, these tough Toyotas can handle whatever you've got. The rugged Tacoma, Trail Ready 4Runner, and the versatile RAV4 Hybrid turn your puddles into playtime. For more, visit Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. As a local community credit union founded by teachers, On Point is committed to supporting the students and faculty at the University of Oregon. And on game day, we're right there with you on the field, in the bleachers, and in the classrooms. Drop by our local branch today and discover the many ways On Point can help support your financial well being. On Point Community Credit Union. People are the point. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. Dear Spring Showers, these tough Toyotas can handle whatever you've got. The rugged Tacoma, Trail Ready 4Runner, and the versatile RAV4 Hybrid turn your puddles into playtime. For more, visit Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. This is Duck Insider, presented by On Point Community Credit Union on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Adopt US Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting a Teenager. Learning the lingo. GOAT, G-O-A-T, acronym, stands for greatest of all time. As in spaghetti sandwiches for dinner? They're my fave. Dad, you're the GOAT. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. What is dedication? My biggest fear in the middle of my addiction was that my kids wouldn't have a father. And I started thinking, you know what? This isn't my story. I definitely had to become a better man to be a better father. It's important to me that my kids are empowered and truly believe that if, if they can think it, they can do it. That's dedication. Visit fatherhood.gov to hear more. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Back inside the Country Financial Studio, it's Duck Insider, brought to you by On Point Community Credit Union. We just talked with H.J. Cohen on Athletic Director Tuesday, also caught up with Melissa Lombardi, preparing for a series against Washington over the weekend and football spring practices. It was spring break last week, so after the Ducks got out onto the practice facility a, a few weeks ago, there was a little bit of a break, but now, Ducks, back on the gridiron. Coach Lanning. He uh, broke it down as well as addressed some coaching changes for Oregon. So here is Coach Lanning post-practice. All right, great to be playing football again. It was a, uh, a great day coming back from spring break. We really taxed the guys today. You want to see what they were able to do over their time off. Um, I thought our guys really pushed through, but we pushed them. Uh, saw some physicality today. We finally got to wear pads, so you get to see who can really play football. Excited to watch the film and see where it goes from there, but we can open it up from, for uh, questions. Your reaction to Carlos Lockman leaving and just the timing of it more than anything. Dan. Yeah, I'm not, I mean, it's, it's football. It's the reality. You know, uh, Carlos did an unbelievable job for uh, us. You know, my goal is when we, when we bring people here, we get to advance them to opportunities that make sense for them. I know how great Oregon is, right? And I know this, the reality is not really concerned about winning the press conference. You know, he did a great job for us here. But when we hired him, he was a relatively unknown coach and did a really, really good job. The key for us is who do we replace him with? Right, and this is a great opportunity. Transitions give you an opportunity to get better. Right, so that's our goal. We're gonna go get better. Um, we're gonna bring somebody in here, can do a really good job with our organization. We got a lot of young coaches right now in our organization that do an unbelievable job. So, um, moving on, right? Excited for the next move. What's the urgency for you guys going forward? The urgency is get it right. Yeah, the urgency is get it right. You're not in a hurry to do uh, anything wrong. Now, we always have a plan. Um, we know, you know, people that we would target for the position, but again, it's about getting it right. It's not about being fast. Is Antonio gonna handle that in the interim? We'll have a, a couple coaches that are handling that uh, in the interim. Uh, really, uh, Jack's working with those guys. Koa, the you know several of our, our coaches can uh, be able to help us in that what that regard. Things, sorry, what are the things you're looking for to get it right and not hire? It's the same thing we've looked for for every coach. You know, I mean, we, when when uh, we had coaches leave our program before, I think about the guys that we've been able to bring in and the job they've done. Coach Hampton's a guy that came and joined our program, did an unbelievable job. Coach Terry, right, and we'll continue to do that and develop and grow within. Right, and look for the things that I'm looking for. What's important? Relationships, guys that connect, connect with players, guys that can develop the position, um, guys that can recruit and retain talent, you know, on our team, and more importantly than anything, people that fit. 
right? It's about the fit. Is it important to get this filled this month so they can be here for summer spring or is that just second? Day? Again, the timing is interesting, but the reality is we're, we're well oiled machine right now. It's moving. We've got guys that are really uh, do a good job in that room. So it's about getting it right. It's not about, you know, sprinting to a date. We don't have to have somebody tomorrow. Um, it's about getting the right person. Does this make you think about revisiting the, the buyout dates just to like, instead of April 1, May 1, Dan, and that kind of like the portal for players, like maybe post spring would be if someone's going to leave, make the buyout more prohibitive in April. Yeah, I'm not really concerned with that. I, at the end of the day, here's what I want. I want people that want to be here and grow here at Oregon, right? We got an unbelievable situation. How long have backs been good at Oregon? You guys think of the names of the guys that have played here at Oregon, right? Whether it's DeAnthony or LaMichael or uh, Jonathan Stewart. Like, there's been a long history. We got some really good backs on this team right now. So I'm worried about who wants to be here and what we're going to be able to do moving forward. Dan, speaking of people who want to be here, what did it mean when Terrence announced he was coming back? And what does he bring to the offense this year? Yeah, I'm, I'll tell you this, uh, Terrence Ferguson has busted his absolute tail to put him in great position to be a, a great player for this program. And, and he's one of many who made the decision to come back and get better, but he's the guy that's putting in the work to do it too. He's lowered his body fat percentage. He's increased his muscle mass. He's a leader on the field, the way he runs in and out of drills. Uh, it's been really, really impressive. Speaking along those lines, Jeff was another one that could have easily left and he stayed. What was that process like and what's it mean for your defense to have him back? I think a lot of these guys saw guys last year that had similar decisions, right? And the success that that led to for them, you know, and Jeff's done an unbelievable job of being a leader. He knows what he wants his play to look like, um, what he wants it to be in the future. And he knows that hard work is what's required to get there and he's willing to work hard. So, you know, when you look at examples of guys like Bo and guys in the past that have they've come back for another year to have a lot of success, I think that's what those guys want to hope, uh, hope to recreate. Now that you can acknowledge Evan Stewart and Jabbar Muhammad, just what attracted you to adding those guys and what do you hope to see from them here in this spring to get acclimated? Yeah, great talent, um, you know, from both of those guys, you know, eager to, to learn. They play fast. Uh, they play with a lot of confidence. You know, I think this is early for them, so it's flying around like crazy right now. But I saw some real positives from them and the way they finished some stuff today. Uh, excited to see what they do on the field for us uh, moving forward. We saw a couple additions to the roster today. There's still a few people that we think might join before the season starts. Do you expect more people in spring or do you have to wait for summer? For yeah, the, the majority, if anybody's not here right now, they'll be joining us in the summer. Rod Pleasant or Bryce Betcher are just going to be track and baseball only here? Or? Well, they're doing they're doing a combination of it. Just depends on schedule time. So when schedule allows, they're with us, and, and when they're not, they're not. Seems like a lot of guys took spring break to kind of continue their training. Did you see that kind of payoff in practice today? And what does that mean to you as a head coach to have guys that take their break time to continue to improve and get better? Well, I think people that want to be great at what they do understand that there aren't really a lot of breaks, right? Now, how you use your time is really important. I thought some of our guys used their time really, really well. You know, we'll go watch the film here and see see who did a good job of that. Thursday and Saturday, what are the, the things you want to see on Thursday and what is it progressing to on Saturday? For you? Just 1% better, right? Just want to see us you know, continue to grow. Uh, it's not really about the plays right now. It's about figuring out who can play football, right? So if it means we you know, throttle back a little bit on install, right? And focus more on who can play ball. You know, that's what I want to see. I want to see that uh, energy and enthusiasm and improvement. How is maybe Dylan Gabriel's leadership and some of those skill sets come into play here? And I know it's early, but just early returns on what you've seen from him, maybe away from the field too. Yeah, I just think more than anything, the way that we prepare has given Dylan an opportunity to really, you know, absorb a lot of this really quick with the walkthroughs that we've had, uh, the time leading up to spring. I was doing spring a little bit later than some teams. I think that's allowed him to really get ahead of the curve before he stepped out here. And then his experience, you know, speaks for itself, his poise, you know, uh, his ability to get guys to come do extra work with him, his ability to get extra work in, I think is really paying off. He's done those dime time retreats before, and I'm sure he's got some scheduled here, but as a coach, what does that mean to you? I mean, everybody puts pressure on quarterback of expectations, what they're supposed to do, how they're supposed to handle things, extra time. What does it mean to you that that's something that he does and he's going to be looking to do here. Yep, he gets it, right? Our, our, our guys get it. Dylan's a guy that gets it. You know, we talk about connections, one of the DNA traits in this program, and that requires time away from ball uh, together. So I think he knows that that's really important for him to be in sync with the guys he's playing with, and, and that's, you know, will pay off in the future. In an offseason, when you lose guys like Bo and Bucky and Troy and Jackson, how important is it to have someone like Terrence Ferguson, especially when you've got new quarterbacks coming in to kind of have that leadership mentality? Yeah, I think, you know, Terrence is a great example of having a guy around, but that's called building, you know, within your program. You're always going to have transition, you know, every single year in college football, there's guys that are going to be leaving. So it's about what are you building underneath it? You know, and he's a great example of a guy that's earned the opportunity to be a leader on this team. He's working his tail really hard, um, working it off uh, to be really elite for us. And we'll continue to grow that throughout the, the team. Evan Stewart, I mean, a guy that a lot of programs obviously wanted, but one in particular about his skill set makes him a good fit for you guys. 
Yeah, I think speed, you know, catch radius. I think there's a lot of things that pop off um, with Evan. I think he saw a lot of opportunity here with what we've done with our wideouts here in the past uh, over the last two years. Um, but, you know, he has the skill set to be a really, really talented player. We had some coaches that were really familiar with him before as well. That certainly paid off. There were a dozen guys that redshirted last season. Where, where have they progressed from – spring ball when they got here last year or maybe it was summertime to, to now How, what it's still doing? early i mean we're three practices in you know and the way we practice you know that's what uh, us going up and watching this film right now will tell us you know i think uh guys have done a really good job growing in this program we're, we're certainly moving forward not backwards so uh some of those guys have done a really good job of growing um i, I still got a lot of practices to see where they're at and spring's all about growth and development dan how specifically important is it for like the second and third offensive line groups because you return so many starters and you're probably in line to lose four guys after the season due to graduation and, and where guys are at. So just the importance of for a year from now when you're going to be replacing guys for the recruiting cycle, for development for that group in particular. Yeah, I think development at every position is really important, not necessarily that position. I'm certainly not thinking uh, two years ahead right now. I'm thinking about this next season, but developing every position really matters for us. That is Coach Lanning uh, back from, well, not break. They, they were working that whole time, but back on the spring football field as the Docs out on the practice facility. Dan Lanning brought to you by the Willamette Valley Cancer Institute and Research Center. Fight like a duck with exceptional cancer care close to home. We're ramping forward. Spring game coming up at the end of the month. We'll have more interviews from student athletes coming up on tomorrow's show. We're hearing some more on Thursday, more on Saturday. <laughs> We're going to be hearing a lot from spring football uh, coming up lately, and oh, well, I'm excited for it. We're going to get to hear from a whole lot of ducks. Couldn't get to the student athletes today, but that's okay. It's also baseball game day. We're touching on it as Joey is making the trek up to Portland right now. We're talking about this game against the Pilots when we come back on Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. As a local community credit union founded by teachers, On Point is committed to supporting the students and faculty at the University of Oregon. And on game day, we're right there with you, on the field, in the bleachers, and in the classrooms. Drop by your local branch today and discover the many ways On Point can help support your financial well-being. On Point Community Credit Union. People are the point. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. Hey Duck fans, we're all about protecting our home turf here in Eugene. You should do the same for your home with Country Financial Insurance. Most home insurance doesn't account for inflation, but with Country Financial, yours can. If something happens to your home, make sure you can rebuild the same house in the same place. Call a local representative or 866-COUNTRY and get a solid defense for your home. Home insurance policies issued by Country Mutual Insurance Company, Country Casualty Insurance Company, or Country Preferred Insurance Company, Bloomington, Illinois. Property must meet aging condition requirements, which vary by state. More Duck Insider coming up on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. This is your captain. We are going to be experiencing some slight turbulence. Please fasten your... Oh, hold on. Just got a video of my cat. Imagine the pilot of an airplane was as confident as you are texting and driving. Seems kind of crazy when you put it like that. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. I'm Chris Jackamick. I served in the United States Air Force, and I deployed three times. So in 2017, I was serving as an Air Force First Sergeant. Our motto in that role is my job is people, everyone is my business. But unfortunately, in that year, I would lose my own brother, Lance Corporal Adam Jackamick, to suicide. The majority of veteran suicides are from guns. I store my weapons securely, not only for myself, but for my family. Store all your guns securely. Help stop suicide. My service never stops. Brought to you by End Family Fire and the Ad Council. We're back on Duck Insider, brought to you by On Point Community Credit Union here inside the Country Financial Studio. It's Oregon Baseball Game Day. Also earlier today, the Oregon football color schedule. What fans should be wearing at Autzen Stadium coming up this season. Kicks off on August 31st against Idaho. It is a stripe out. Stripe out worked so well this year. Now going into next year, I'm excited to see the stripe out again. Then game two on September 7th, going up against Boise State. That game is a wear black game on the road against Oregon State. 
That coming up on September 14th, that's going to be up in Corvallis. Wear green if you're going on the road for that one. Then also against UCLA, first Big Ten game. UCLA kicking off the Big Ten slate. I'm not sure if it makes a whole bunch of a sense. I feel like the the initiation of the Big Ten, and it, but against the Pac-12 team, either way, if you're going down to Los Angeles for that one, it's going to be a wear white game, and then it's the Big Ten homestand. Going up against Michigan State to kick off Autzen Stadium in the Big Ten era, that is a wear yellow game on October 5th. The week after, Ohio State, a wear black game on October 12th. Then it's on the road against Purdue. That is a wear white game. Back here at Autzen Stadium on the 26th of October against Illinois, wear yellow for that one. Going on the road to Michigan on November 2nd, that is a wear white game. Most of the road games are a wear white game other than the Oregon State contest. So wear white against Michigan, then back home against Maryland on the 9th of November. That is a wear green. On the road against Wisconsin the next week, that is a wear white. And then closing out the conference schedule two weeks after. So there's a bye week between Wisconsin and Washington, but closing out the season, the regular season on the 30th of November, it is a wear green game here in Washington. Also some Generation O uniforms. So it's going to be a new look for Oregon football. Don't know what that's going to be yet, but it will be new and it will be fun. I'm excited for it. Also, Oregon baseball in action today going up against Portland. The Ducks have won seven of their last eight. Portland has won seven in a row. Something's got to give. These two teams faced off a, a few weeks ago, and Portland had the upper hand at PK Park. Ducks looking to return the favor and take down the Pilots. Some Ducks going to be in action. Collegiate Ducks tonight. Also, yesterday, some Pro Ducks were in action. And Spencer Steer, he's having a really strong start to his season. And this is the biggest swing of his season. Hadn't had a career home run in the majors before yesterday. And in extra innings, well, he changed the tune. Steer to left center. Grand slam! The first of his big league career. A big time, big fly, and a 6-2 Reds lead in extras. Huge swing by Spencer Steer. Ended up giving the Reds an eventual 6-3 victory in extra innings in that ball game. Good to see him performing at the highest level. Also a few products that are in the minor league ranks as well that are working their way up that we can uh, continue to keep an eye on. Ducks newly into the top 25, depending on which poll you look at. Ducks enter in at number 20 in the D1 baseball poll. So Oregon, they are ranked in the top 25 by Baseball America, also receiving votes depending on which other polls you look at. So Ducks in action tonight against Portland. 535, Joey McAuliffe pregame at 515. I'll be tuning in. Will you? See you tomorrow. Go Ducks. Babes, what are you doing? What? I'm just mowing the lawn. No, it's blazing hot and dry out here. Don't you remember? Smokey Bear says. Avoid using power equipment when it's windy or dry. Where'd you learn this? Oh, it's on... SmokeyBear.com.